Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Caleb, and welcome back to another reaction video here for today. And today we're going to Robin's top 30 favorite anime of all time. Now, I'm thinking this was Robin's birthday video that they usually do for everybody's birthday at Anime America. So, it's about... I don't even know. I'm kind of dead today. It's been a while since I've recorded a reaction video, so I don't know exactly how to behave around it. Or, at least this kind of reaction video. I've reacted to other things before like Tokyo Ghoul most recently but um yeah just haven't really done anything else so without any further ado let's go and just get this video started this video has been sponsored by the dollar shape club one top of the line razors for a buck stay tuned to find out how <clears throat> Another year has come and gone, and now I've reached the big 3-0. Oh no! This video is airing before my official birthday, but close enough. And of course, people last year wanted me to do top 10 anime I like, but everyone hates. But who can actually do that? I mean, with every anime, big or small, there's bound to be someone else out there who will like that particular anime as well. Yeah. At least it's what the comment section tells me. So instead, I'm going to do something really ambitious. Something similar to what you guys have been asking for a while, but bigger. Since I'm turning 30, let's do my top 30 favorite anime of all time. That way you can tell me in the comment section the ones you like and don't like as I go over 30 anime titles that I personally hold dear to my heart. There's really no other rule to this. This isn't top 30 best anime of all time or titles that you will absolutely like. These are just my favorite anime titles. So if I see any comments saying, but what about this anime? Surely you like this one? Well, I, I don't know how else to tell you that this is my list, not yours. With that said, here is my Fair enough. Anime America's Fair enough. top 30 favorite anime of all time. That's the only way to put it, really. So Number 30. If I had to choose one Studio Ghibli film, it's Howl's Moving Castle. I love the setting designs, the characters, the romance this, between the This Howl does look like a really good movie. it's just an overall whimsical experience. There's a lot of Studio Ghibli films that I love, including Spirited Away, Kiki's Delivery Service, and The Tale of Princess Kaguya, but Howl's Moving Castle will always be my favorite. Number 29, Darker Than Black. If you ever wanted to watch Batman mixed with X-Men, this is for you. Hell, Hayes' non-canon nickname was Chinese Electric Batman. To basically sum up the what? plot, an unknown domish gate has appeared out of nowhere and has somehow given birth to a new wave of humans with inhuman-like abilities known as contractors. With the government involved trying to protect the citizens, you see a diverse variable stories ranging from contractors abusing their powers to those trying to live out their days normally. It's a thrilling tale of intrigue and suspense, so I definitely recommend Darker Than Black. Number 28, Death Parade. What's the best way to decide if your soul gets reincarnated or not? Two random people are brought into a mysterious bar run by one of several bartenders, one of them being Deckham. The two people are challenged to a game for their lives, with both of them questioning what happens if they lose. Depending on how they play and how they treat each other determines whether they are reincarnated or not. Deckham is paired with a random assistant who doesn't necessarily belong in their world, but why? This is an intense drama putting human flaws to the ultimate test. Depending on how we Ooh, treat each okay. other and how selfish we can be, it's put to the ultimate non-biased test, Shut but up, the computer. system itself isn't 100% perfect. It's an emotional roller coaster done right, so if you're interested, check out Death Parade. Okay, I actually never knew the plot of Death Parade, so I'm actually gonna watch that now. Food Wars, yes. Despite my previous review, I absolutely love this series, even if the dubbing is. I hope you'll be able to get settled. I hate this part. I really do. That that dubbing absolutely fucking sucks. His skills are pretty good given his circumstances, but even though it's to some people in this area, it's accurate, but it's not meant to be for that area. There, he'll be able to meet a diverse range of chefs putting his pride and skills to the ultimate test. But yes, Food While Wars is a damn good show. show a little over service, the top, but still a good show. The main lead, I would highly recommend it. Be, it's often finding himself in battles he can't win despite how hard he tries. It's a very entertaining show for more than one reason, and that's okay in my book. Check out Food Wars if you haven't already. Yeah. Number 26. You all want me to talk about Gundams, but it's kind of hard when I haven't had the chance to watch many of them. But there is one that I really like. 
Gundam Wing. This one was one of my favorite shows to air on Toonami. It features a military struggle between the United Forces on Earth and the independent space colonies trying to live out their lives in peace without the oppressive ruling of the other. In an act of vengeance and retaliation, five scientists have created five different Gundam mobile suits to bring an end to the Alliance and make the colonies free to live out their lives in peace. With multiple influences of power in the game trying to toy with our five heroes, we watch an interesting drama as five young men do what they can to maintain peace and bring an end to this unnecessary war over control and power. It's a classic title I love watching as a kid, and maybe you'll like it if you're interested. Hmm. Number 25, Tiger and Bunny. The one thing I ask in many shows recycling old themes is to give us something new. This is a superhero show, but with big business involved as well. A rare phenomenon causes some children to be born with supernatural powers, which ultimately isolates them from society. In an effort to use their powers for good, a reality show has been made called Hero TV to turn these supernatural beings into superheroes. The only catch is they have to have corporate sponsors if they ever want to make it into the big leagues. I made a review of this a while ago, but I just wanted to say I really love this series from the okay. diverse characters with their own stories to how they're treated in the system and even thinking of the moral questions of right and wrong all come into play beautifully it's a fascinating show that never left me bored so be sure to check out tiger and bunny okay number 24 I might give that shot shimonetta the world has created a war on morality against anything crude and perverted. While those in power think the world will be a better place with perversion outlawed, rebels like Socks, created by IMA, vowed to bring back freedom of oh, school and education this show. Okay. body education. I am all for everything this show represents. Okay. How yeah, I got it. The government has and how it seriously affects the masses and demonstrating the good and if... bad ways to protest. It's a one-of-a-kind show with a lot of innuendos, but a good message. If you can handle the humor and imagery, you should definitely watch Shimonetta. Number 23, Jing, King of Bandits. I legit want to know how many people know about this show. It was one of my I don't. favorite series to purchase and my favorite manga series to collect growing up, and I still appreciate it to this day. A bandit king named Jing travels the globe in search of some of the rarest treasures rumored to be true. The methods he takes to find these treasures, plus the creative world he lives in, makes this story a one-of-a-kind experience. From helping a girl trying to find her father who was in search for the perfect shade of red for his masterpiece, <coughs> to finding a mysterious instrument known as the Ocarina of the Moon, the adventures Jing and his bird companion Kier have are both timeless and unforgettable. Number 22. Oran High School Host Club. Yes. I fell in love with this series. I want a season two, years. damn it. A poor transfer student named Hotterhe tries to find a quiet room to study in, only to accidentally find the host club. Because a highly expensive vase was destroyed, Hotterhe now owes the host club a lot of money and must now work for them in order to pay them back. The only catch is... Haruhi is mistaken as a boy when she's actually a girl. It's a cute story of friendship and growth as the host club share wonderful moments together and learn from one another. Not only do the host club members learn more about themselves and who they want to be, but our main heroine Haruhi learns how to depend on others and reach out to them whether she needs help or not. A wonderful bond is made in front of our eyes and I loved every second of it. Number 21, Gosik. A young Japanese student named Kujo transfers to a highly renowned school in Europe and is automatically ignored because his name and appearance resembles a very bad omen. Just out of curiosity, he makes his way to the top of the library's tower where he meets a golden-haired maiden named Victorique, aka anime's smartest tsundere. Victorique has been given specific orders to stay in that tower until her father asks of her, but until then, Kujo and Victorique aid the police with a number of mysteries to be solved. Each mystery is unique in their own way. A good chunk of them being very dark and depressing, especially the ones that revolved around the royal queen and the alchemist. It's a fascinating and cute story as I adore the main couple while being hopeful they'll find a way to live their lives in peace. Definitely a story I recommend. Number 20, Lucky Star. A cute school life series following the lives of four random girls, but one of them is a massive otaku. That being said, most of the jokes in this show involve Konata's behavior and how she behaves in front of her friends with little to no shame. That is, until her homework gets involved. Rule of thumb, never play an online MMO with your teacher. <laughs> it's a consciously cute series, but it's full of great characters and a lot of good jokes. I've met several people who particularly didn't like this series, but I never regret saying I actually like this show, and it's one of my many favorites. Number 19. The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya 
While I do understand Strider's argument in a video we made not too long ago, I still find this series as one of my favorites. An ambitious girl named Haruhi wants her life to be more interesting, so she sets out on a personal quest to find the weird, bizarre, and abnormal in the world while dragging along the one guy who will actually talk to her, Kyon. She won't stop until she finds something strange like aliens, espers, and time travelers, while not realizing that the other three members of her club just happen to be a time traveler, an esper, and an alien. Only Kyon is allowed to know this as Hutter He is the planet's new god, and if she finds out about any of this, the Earth could possibly come to an end depending on her reaction. Yes, the main character can be annoying, and there's some unfavorable fan service involved, but I can't help but love this story. It's interesting to watch, even when it gives me an existential crisis here and there, so I'll continue to love this series. Number 18, Bacchano. An old friend of mine wouldn't shut up about this show, so I ended up watching it and loved it. Out of the dozens of shows she had me watch, she got me to like at least one of them, so good for her, I guess. Regardless, Bacchano is excellent. A story unfolds during the hype of the 1920s and 30s Mafia Wars, as we witness a lot of random characters intermingling their own affairs with each other while somehow getting immortality and witchcraft involved. It's a bizarre show, but the characters really pull it all together. Every single one of them are memorable in their own ways, and you just want to watch them forever. I can't recommend this enough, so be sure to watch it if you haven't. Number 17. Free and Free Eternal Sun. Yes! One of maybe two sports shows I like, and not for obviously sexy what? The story is actually packed a lot of depth to them, which I really like. I really did like the story. The story of this anime was really freaking good. Of swimming and working as a team created when everyone moved on or was hurt from a previous incident. The second season, however, affected me the most as it reflects what every teenager experiences in their senior year of high school. Our school days are coming to an end. What are we going to do? Pretty I think much. Given the topic at hand, the stories and characters took me by surprise, and that's why I will always love this show. If you could find... I will go and Number say this. 16. If you can find some way to take your time I'm off, like, the first couple months after you get out of high school, the exact same series based in the same everything kind of... Not really falls into place, but it smoothens itself out. Each series contains three or more couples living out their days and their chosen careers while trying to maintain their relationships with each other. While some relations are a lot more loving and healthy than others... I still enjoy this series for what it is. I'm interested in some of these relationships and where they go from there. Some of them are cute and irresistible, some are annoying and face palmingly bad, and then there's Onadera and Takano. Okay, hey, on Onadera, Onadera, just, can you, can you just say you love him already? I mean, you, you already know you love him. We know you love him. Just, just say it, okay? Just say it. In the last chapter, it said we have like 35 days left until you confess, but that was months ago. Damn it. Make it happen. Maybe for my birthday, because that'd be an awesome birthday present. <laughs> Anyways, I like these shows. Moving on. Number 15, Princess Tutu. A fairy tale unlike any other for very good reasons. A young girl is studying to be a ballerina, but isn't really good at it. However, when the young man she has a crush on is in danger, she suddenly transforms into the beautiful and majestic Princess Tutu, a prima donna magical girl who's really good at ballet. Shortly after her transformation, however, she discovers that she was originally a duck. Unless she wears her special locket, which allows her to transform into Princess Tutu. With her powers, she vows to restore the princess heart to normal while finding away a jealous adversary named Krahi. Throughout the series, however, we discover that this story isn't really what it seems as the story suddenly turns into a different direction. I love the characters, the sudden direction the show made, and love the ending, despite what others had to say about Duck not necessarily getting the happy ending everyone thinks she deserved. Check out the series for yourself and tell me if you thought the ending was good or not, and it's your opinion. Number 14, Read or Die. If secret agents were somehow given supernatural abilities while trying to redefine the world, you'd have Read or Die TV and OVA. I never knew what to expect when I first had to watch this show, but man, was I surprised and pleased with it in the end. What started off as a cute show featuring a strange ability to manipulate paper turns into an all-out war of one's ideology of peace versus freedom. It's a one-of-a-kind show with some of the strongest characters I've ever come across in anime, both physically and mentally. Out of all the Patreon requests I've covered so far, this one had to be my most pleasant surprise. Definitely watch it when you have the chance. Number 13, Angel Beats. 
My friend Kenny introduced me to this show, and I still need to watch this show. Ever since. Young souls who die at a very young age find themselves in a high school for the afterlife. While our main characters try to fight the system they believe is trying to conform them with little to no questions answered, our main character Otanashi wants to find a middle ground and discover the answer in his own way. It's an emotional and bittersweet story full of wonderful characters and memorable moments that'll bring you down to tears. From Iwasawa's final performance to the final episode with Angel and Otanashi, this is a tear-jerking anime that I can still watch over and over again. Number 12, Overlord. To everyone who I've been curious on this one. and also read the novels trying to spoil everything, thanks. With that aside, the Overlord anime definitely grabbed my attention and makes me anticipate the next coming seasons. A young man is playing a game about to shut down called Egg Yourself. There, I said it right. He wishes to stay in the game until the final minute for memory's sake. Once the game's server turns to midnight, the player discovers that somehow he can't be transported out of the game and realizes that he is now in the world itself, with all the AI companions suddenly becoming real. In order to get to the bottom of this, he decides to explore his new home while trying not to cause a scene since, well, he's a giant skeleton lich lord, so there's that. With how the writers handle this setup and with our main lead seriously being overpowered, I found myself really enjoying Overlord. Once season two is done, I will definitely marathon it and wait patiently for season three. Number 11. Interesting. Inuyasha. The yes, one Inuyasha. The one have been begging me to review, and I promised I would review it once I hit 500,000 subs. Seriously, we're pretty much around 480,000, so hopefully it won't take too long. A hopefully demon not. is found trying to steal a very powerful jewel when a wounded priestess uses one of her arrows to seal him away before she tragically dies while having her body burned with the jewel on her. 300 years later, a young girl named Kagome is dragged into her family's cursed well, which sends her all the way back to the medieval period, 50 years after the fight between the priestess Kikyo and Inuyasha. There she finds the demon still stuck on the tree as they discover that the sacred jewel is inside Kagome. Later on in the series, the jewel is destroyed into several pieces, allowing demons to enhance their powers all throughout the country. So Inuyasha and Kagome must work together to find all the pieces again before the nefarious Naraku gets his hands on them. This is a classic anime for many reasons, but I'll address the reasons why in my upcoming review. So be sure to stick around for that if you're interested. I'm very interested. Number like, 10. I still need to get- Every season of Dragon Ball. Except GT. Who the hell even likes GT? I do! Yeah, Fuck you! GT was games. not that bad. Come on. The Dragon Ball revolves around our main hero, Goku, and everything he encounters. But, but seriously, GT like was not that bad. Balls to make a wish, to make new friends that still make it appear. It was the exact same story as, as Dragon Ball, just different, but it wasn't that bad. Ball is just a lot of fun to watch. If anything, we got it's Super Saiyan 4 out of it, which is bad ass as hell. Just sit back and enjoy all the crazy awesome things the Dragon Ball universe has to offer. But that's my opinion, so. Number nine. Black Butler. Yes, I Black Butler. About how addicting this story was. I want to see the Book of Murder, Murder goddammit. I knew I had to see this show. A young boy named C.L. Phantom Hive is now in charge of his family's enterprise while being guarded by one hell of a butler named Sebastian Michaelis. This then makes him an easy target to a lot of competing businesses trying to overthrow his power. But what they don't realize is Sebastian isn't no ordinary butler, for he's actually a demon in disguise contracted to serve CL until his request is satisfyingly fulfilled. I honestly believe that the first series on its own is a great product. It was an overall thrilling experience with one of the most chilling yet fitting endings for the story to have. That is until the studio saw the big yen signs in their eyes and decided to greenlit season 2. Ugh. Regardless on how I feel, I still love this series and appreciate the other series and movies capturing the awesome moments from the manga. It's a beautifully dark series I love to watch and recommend. Number 8. Gravitation. My first ever yaoi series that I still hold dear to my heart, but I found myself appreciating the story the older I got. The story centers around Shindo Shuichi and his band Bad Luck. They're trying to make it big in the industry, but Shuichi is having some rotten luck with his lyrics until a renowned writer named Yuki Eri comes into his life. He tells Shuichi that his lyrics suck and he should just give up, but this only pushes Shuichi to prove him wrong. Many more encounters happen between the two of them, which then creates a strange yet endearing relationship. It's an intense romance as our couple faces numerous obstacles just to maintain a relationship. 
from Shuichi's band life escalating into fame while attracting band jealousy to Yuki's own personal turmoil distancing himself from the one thing that could really make him happy, it's an emotional series that I always love to watch for its amazing characters, story, and catchy music. Number 7. Azumanga Daio. Of all the school life shows out there, this one is my favorite. A 10-year-old girl named Chiyo-chan has been accepted into high school due to her increased intellect and maturity. From there, we watch her interact with other students and teachers with their own quirky personalities. It's hard describing what makes this series so appealing, but I guess to me, it's just so charming. The characters are hilarious in their own way as we watch them react in whatever situation they're in. We're introduced to each of them so well that we would believe every little action they do, whether they seem ridiculous or not. There's nothing much more to say. I just think it's cute, charming, and funny. Number 6. Yuri on Ice. Yes. The other one of two sports shows that I like. <laughs> if you haven't seen my review of it, this is about a young skater named Yuri Katsuki thinking about retiring due to his poor performance at the Grand Prix Finals. That is until the world champion skater Victor Nikivaros sees his potential and decides to become his coach while promising he'll win at the Grand Prix Finals. <laughs> From here on out, we are introduced to some wonderful characters, watch some amazing choreography that'll get cleaned up in editing for the Blu-ray release and witness a wonderful relationship blossom in front of our eyes. Victor and Yuri are one of my favorite couples of all time, and I cherish everything about them because of this anime. Number 5. Helsing. One of the most badass shows I've ever witnessed in my entire life because of our main anti-hero, Alucard. A young girl named Integra Helsing takes over the family name and industry when her uncle tries to kill her and claim it all for himself. While fleeing for her life, Integra finds her family's well-kept secret, a vampire locked away waiting to serve the family out of a promise he made to the one who captured him. From that day forward, Integra and her facility have been cracking down on vampire cases all over the country with the help of her monstrous servant, Alucard. I was so happy to finally watch this series with my husband a few years ago and was not disappointed. I love both the original series and Helsing Ultimate for just how amazing this presentation is. From the awesome fight scenes to the chilling villains, I'll always love watching this hellishly good series. Number 4. Fushigi Yugi The Mysterious Play I've always been a huge fan of Yuatase's work and this show started it all for me. Miyaka and her best friend are studying at a library when they come across a mysterious book hidden away. They are suddenly transported into a new world set in ancient China when they discover why they were summoned there to begin with. Miyaka is now the priestess of Suzaku, and if she wants any of her three wishes granted, she must find all seven Suzaku warriors to summon the great god, Suzaku. However, her best friend Yui is now the priestess of Seryu, and due to a tragic misunderstanding, Yui vows to stop Miyaka at all costs while serving her kingdom's greatest enemy, the Seryu Kingdom. This is what every modern shoujo series aspires to be now, but probably could never reach this level due to the budget limits the studio sets out. It's an epic adventure, drama, romance, and action series all rolled into an epic story for the ages. With its series and manga prequels, I highly suggest this classic anime if you want to see one of the most epic shoujo stories of all time. Number 3. Cowboy Bebop. A show I still need to watch Cowboy Bebop as well. The There's a lot of anime I still need to watch. It's, to say it's ridiculous. It carries its title deservingly. The setting is in the far off future where space travel is comfortably possible. However, instead of a hopeful and clean future, we're given a story that's closer to reality than we like to accept. Crime is everywhere, there are gang members making other people's lives a living hell, and the system doing what they can to put it into it all heavily relies on bounty hunters. Our show follows one of them named Spike Spiegel, along with his partner Jet, a femme fatale hunter named Faye Valentine, a smart little doggy named Ayn, and a super genius hacker named Ed. Our characters carry on into numerous ventures, bringing in either fortune or misery. While some today would see the series as bland and uninteresting, this is a show I'll always hold close to me. It surprisingly feels real despite it being set into the far off future, but mostly with how relatable these settings and our characters can be. I won't be one of those fans by saying, you're not a real fan unless you watch this show, but do take some time to give this series a chance. I still need to give it a watch some Number point. Number two, Outlaw Star. While this has a Outlaw more Star is another one I need to watch. Bebop, this is still a one of a kind sci fi adventure that I hold dear to my heart. Gene Starwin and his partner Jim Hawkins are practically the jack of all trades, just trying to get by. 
until the space pirates land on their planet following the trail of a wanted outlaw named Hilda. She enlists their help to find a key component to the ship she stole, which is somehow this girl named Melfina. Their adventure begins at that point to locate the XGP ship and make their way to the universe's most hidden treasure, the Galactic Leyline. With its unique characters, high-flying action scenes in space, and the story that just keeps building to the very end, I just can't help but love this series. Yeah, I have my biased thoughts on this as I was on the abridged version of this show, and that's how I actually met my husband, but I actually loved this show even before that point in my life. So it's a series I'll always cherish for multiple reasons. <laughs> and my number, number one, one favorite anime of all time is... Now you know the answer, so let's say it together. Three, two, one, Sailor Moon. This is by far the most famous magical girl show <sighs> of all time, and all for the right reasons. I mean, you're not wrong. It really is. Kino, just I just probably don't give two shits places. about it. <laughs> However, her world turns upside down when a cat named Luna tells her she's the chosen guardian of the moon, Sailor Moon. From this point onward, we meet more guardian scouts from different planets, helping our main hero grow as a person and as a true guardian. This was my first anime series as a kid. I've watched a few other titles from Japan many years earlier, but Sailor Moon was my first ever serious anime, and I have many cherished memories because of it. I watched all the episodes, read all the manga chapters, and still collect the merchandise to this day. I'm even dreaming of a trip to Universal Studios Osaka if I ever have the money to do it because I want to experience the Sailor Moon attraction. My first <laughs> monthly special on this channel was dedicated to Sailor Moon. I've said it many times before, and I'll say it to the day I eventually die, Sailor Moon will always be my favorite anime of all time. Yeah, I know this is a long list, but I guess I wanted to make an exception since I am turning 30. Now you get to look at my top 30 favorite titles of all time and tell me which ones you like and don't like. I'm looking forward to your But here's also the thing. It's 30 as of when you made this video. If you were to try to do this, if you were to try to do this video maybe another two years from now, a lot of anime could actually change out of that, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Oh... Anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button down there. Sorry I'm not really, like, doing much of an outro. I'm kind of out of it right now, honestly. I was able to get through this and everything. It's It's got a lot of animes I would actually love to watch. I just don't really have the time. And also, I'm just trying to get videos edited and done for next week, so that way I don't have to worry about too much, because i got to pack everything up and get ready to head over to Alabama next Friday. Uh, okay anyways and yeah yeah whole lot of planning and stuff and i got like two uh shows i gotta do tuesday and thursday so oh it's gonna be fun week for me but anyways and as always subscribe if you guys are not subscribed for more of these videos here on my channel and until next time i will see you guys later